This is gonna be a classic do a hard integral video. And the integral we look at here is a logarithmic trigonometric integral given by the integral from zero to pi halves of natural log a squared cosine squared theta plus b squared sine squared theta d theta. And a common strategy when attacking these types of integrals is to make a change of variables that will remove the trig functions. And there are two common changes of variables in this case. We could either let x equal sine theta, and if x is equal to sine theta, well then theta is gonna be arc sine of x. Or we could let x equal tangent theta, which is going to make theta equal to arc tan x. And in this case, we're gonna use that tangent substitution because we have a sine and a cosine in here, and that'll be most useful in this case. Okay, so let's get to it. So like I said before, we're gonna let x equal tangent theta, but now that's equivalent to saying that theta equals the arctan of x, which tells us d theta is equal to one over x squared plus one dx. And that's an important thing to calculate because it shows up in the integral right there. Great, now what we'd like to do is use this defining relation, x equals tangent theta, to get some equations of cosine and sine in terms of x. And so we can do that pretty easily. Let's go ahead and draw a triangle. So we'll take this triangle, we'll give it an angle of theta, this will be the right angle, and then since tangent of theta is x, we know the opposite is x and the hypotenuse is one, because tangent theta is like x over one. Next, by the Pythagorean theorem, we can complete this triangle, we'll get that the hypotenuse is x squared plus one. Great. Now we can calculate cosine and sine of theta just by this completed triangle. And in fact, what we'll do is calculate cosine squared and sine squared because that's what shows up in the integral. So let's go ahead and do that. So cosine squared, so that is going to be adjacent divided by hypotenuse squared. So here we have one over x squared plus one. So it's nice that the x squared plus one and the square root cancels. And then similarly for sine squared, we have this is x over x squared plus one. Sorry, I should say x squared over x squared plus one. Now the next thing that we want to do is change the bounds of integration. So notice that these are theta numbers and we need to change them to x numbers. So we can do that pretty easily. If theta is equal to zero, that implies that x equals tangent of zero, but that means that x equals zero. Then furthermore, if theta equals pi over two, well, that's gonna be a discontinuity for tangent. So we really wanna think about theta approaching pi over two from below, but that means that x approaches positive infinity, just thinking about the behavior of tangent near that asymptote pi over two. Now we're ready to substitute all of these parts into our integral, so we've got a new integral which only depends on x. So we're gonna have the integral from zero to infinity. Those are our new bounds of integration as we just discussed. We'll have this d theta term, which gives us an x squared plus one in the denominator. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. We have x squared plus one. That's gonna be in the denominator. And then we have this natural log stuff in the numerator. So we'll have the natural log of, so a squared cosine squared will be a squared over x squared plus one plus b squared sine squared will be b squared x squared over x squared plus one. And so it turns out that our integral is transformed into this one. Now we wanna simplify this integrand using some logarithm rules and the fact that we have a common denominator here. So let's go ahead and do that. This is gonna be equal to the integral from zero to infinity of natural log of a squared plus b squared x squared over x squared plus one all over x squared plus one dx. But now we can rewrite that as the integral from zero to infinity of the natural log of a squared plus b squared x squared minus the natural log of one plus x squared all over one plus x squared dx. Great. And now there's actually one more thing that I wanna do before we move on to that next step.
And that is, I wanna add zero to the numerator here. And it's pretty tricky, but the form of zero that I want to add is plus and minus the natural log of a squared plus x squared. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert that right here. I'll insert a plus natural log of a squared plus x squared and a minus natural log of a squared plus x squared. Great. Now I'll go ahead and bring that up and then we'll continue to the next step. Okay, so on the last board we arrived at the following integral. So I've split it into two parts after adding and subtracting this natural log of a squared plus x squared. But that's a pretty easy calculation that I did off board. So now I have two integrals that I want to calculate. This first one is the integral from zero to infinity of natural log of a squared plus b squared x squared minus natural log of a squared plus x squared all over x squared plus one. And then this second one is the integral from zero to infinity of natural log of a squared plus x squared minus natural log of x squared plus one all over x squared plus one. So I'm going to do these one at a time, starting with this left integral. So I'll just maybe go ahead and put a red box here to show that on this chalkboard, I'm just going to be calculating this red integral. So this thing is going to be equal to the integral from zero to infinity. I'm going to write that as one over x squared plus one. And next, I want to rewrite this like it is kind of a zeroth integral. So in other words, I can write this as the natural log of a squared plus x squared y squared, where we evaluate that from y equals one to y equals b, and now I've got dx there. So let's see what I've done. If I evaluate this at y equals b, notice I get this term up here. If I evaluate this at y equals one, I get this term right there. And that gives us a big hint that we can rewrite this as a double integral if we take the partial derivative of this with respect to y. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So we can rewrite this as the integral from 0 to infinity and then the integral from 1 to b of, so now we need this x squared plus 1 in the denominator, and then we need the partial derivative of this natural log type term also in here. So let's see what we get for that. So notice, using the chain rule, the derivative of the inside will be 2x squared y, and then this is over x squared plus 1. That came for free because we already had it. And then a squared plus x squared y squared. And that came from the derivative of the log thing. Okay, great. And then here we have that this is dy dx. And now you can check that Fubini's theorem is satisfied. So in other words, we can do a change in the order of integration. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So changing the order of integration, we have the integral from 1 to b, and then the integral from 0 to infinity of 2x squared y over all of that same stuff. So let's go ahead and write that down dx dy. So I've changed the order of integration here. Now notice this innermost integral is with respect to x and it is also a rational function in x. So that really points out that we should do partial fraction decomposition. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe overline this in blue and point out that we need to do partial fractions. So partial fractions, it's a fairly simple thing if you've done it a few times. So I'm not going to do all of the steps for the partial fractions. I'll let you guys check all of the steps. I'll just jump to what the partial fraction decomposition is. And that will be the following. We'll have the integral from 1 to b, then the integral from 1 to infinity. The partial fraction decomposition with respect to x of this stuff that I have overlined in blue can be written in the following way. So we'll have 2y over y squared minus a squared times the quantity 1 over 1 plus x squared minus 1 over a squared plus x squared y squared. And I should say that this needs an a squared in the numerator and we're doing our x integral first and then our y integral second. Great. Now what we want to notice is we have two 
parts that both have irreducible quadratics in the denominator. So that gives us a hint that we should be able to use um, an inverse tangent as our antiderivative. And that's exactly what we should do. And so let's see what we get when we do that. So here we'll have the integral from one to b. So that's happening on the outside. And then in this next step, I am doing the x antiderivative. So doing the x antiderivative, so notice this 2y over y squared minus a squared is like a constant. So I can just bring that down, 2y over y squared minus a squared. And then I have the antiderivative of this first bit. So that's just arctan of x. And then minus the antiderivative of this second bit. So the antiderivative of this second bit will be minus a over y times arctan of xy over a. So a uh, pretty simple like u substitution will take you from this to this. So I'll let you guys check that. One thing that you can maybe do is cancel out the a's so that you have a one here, a one here, and then um, maybe like x squared over a squared times y squared or something like that. Okay, great. So we've got something uh, in this form. We're evaluating that from zero to infinity, and then we will eventually do a y integral. Okay, great. So now let's see, if we plug zero in here, we have arctan of zero and arctan of zero, those are both zero. If we plug infinity into both of these, we have arctan of quote infinity and arctan of infinity, it's really a limit, but that limit is equal to pi over two. So we can factor a pi out of two of each of these and we're left with one here and a over y there. So let's see what that gives us. So we have pi times the integral from one to b. So I've taken my pi over two and I've canceled this two. And then I have y over y squared minus a squared. And then I have one minus a over y dy. So that's where I am so far. So let's go ahead and bring that up and then we'll continue on. Okay, so on the last board, we worked this red underlined integral down into the following single integral with respect to y. And that is pi times the integral from one to b of y over y squared minus a squared times one minus a over y. Now what I wanna do is take this y and distribute it onto both of those terms and see that that gives us pi times, we have the integral from one to b of, y minus a over y squared minus a squared dy. Now, since this y squared minus a squared is a difference of squares, we can write that as y minus a times y plus a. Notice that the y minus a cancels with the one that we have in the numerator. And we're left with this is equal to pi times the integral from one to b of one over y plus a dy. That has a fairly simple antiderivative, so that means we're almost done. We have this, this is equal to pi times the natural log of y plus a. We're gonna evaluate that from one to b. So that's going to give us pi times the quantity, natural log of a plus b minus natural log of a plus one. So now let's go ahead and replace this red underlined integral with the value that we just calculated. Okay, so we just replaced our first integral with its value. So we have pi times natural log of a plus b minus pi times natural log of a plus one. The next thing that we wanna do is attack this second integral. So I'll go ahead and draw a blue box here to point out that now we're just going to be calculating that second integral given that we have the value of the first one already. Okay, so maybe the first thing that I'll do is rewrite this as a single integral and then a zeroth integral and then turn it into a double integral and continue on just like we had done before. So I'm gonna write this as the integral from zero to infinity of one over x squared plus one. Now this looks like the natural log of x squared plus y squared where we evaluate that from y equals one to y equals a dx. Good. 
Now what I'll do is I will change this zeroth integral to a first integral by taking the derivative. So that's gonna give us the integral from zero to infinity, then the integral from one to a. I need to take the derivative of this with respect to y. That'll give me two y over x squared plus one came from the part that we already have x squared plus y squared gets sent downstairs because of the derivative of the log. And then we have dy dx. Okay, so now again, you can check that Fubini's theorem is satisfied so we can change the order of integration and we'll do that. That'll be the integral from one to a and then the integral from zero to infinity of two y over x squared plus one times x squared plus y squared. Now it is with respect to x first and then with respect to y. And just like we did on the last board, we need to do a partial fraction decomposition of this stuff that I am overlining in pink. So again, I'll let you guys work out all of the details to this partial fraction decomposition. It's not that bad of a calculation, and then we'll just ju jump right to what we get. So doing this partial fraction decomposition, we get the integral from one to a, the integral from zero to infinity, and then this stuff that I have overlined in pink will now become 2y over y squared minus one times the quantity 1 over x squared plus 1 minus 1 over x squared plus y squared. And now we see that each of these is an irreducible quadratic, which means it's going to have an antiderivative that looks like inverse tangent. So obviously 1 over x squared plus 1 is just going to be arctan of x. And the other bit you'll have to tweak a little bit because we have x squared plus y squared instead of x squared plus 1. I'll let you guys think about that or check in like an integral table or something. But suffice it to say, what we get is the integral from 1 to a and then 2y over y squared minus 1. This is going to be arctan of x minus 1 over y times arctan of x over y. And then that is evaluated from x equals 0 to infinity. And then we have a y integral on the outside. Okay, so now plugging in zero, we'll have zero minus zero because inverse tangent of zero is zero. Plugging in infinity, we'll have pi over two minus one over y pi over two. I'll go ahead and take the two, cancel it with this two, bring the pi out. That will give us pi times the integral from one to a of y over y squared minus one times one minus one over y dy. Great. Now I'll go ahead and bring that up to this point and we'll finish it off. So on the last board, we worked our blue underlined integral down to pi times the integral from one to a of y over y squared minus one times the quantity one minus one over y. Now what we'll do is take this y, distribute it through, and notice that that is going to give us a y minus one. Then furthermore, we can use the difference of squares formula to rewrite this as y minus one times y plus one and see that this y minus one will cancel pretty similarly to how it worked before. So this is going to give us pi and then the integral from one to a of one over y plus one dy. So that has a standard antiderivative. We can write that as pi times the natural log of y plus one evaluated from one to a, which will give us pi times the natural log of a plus one minus pi times the natural log of two. Great. So now let's go ahead and bring this up into the value for the second integral. Then we'll combine everything together and be done. So now we have values for our first integral and our second integral, and now we're ready to put it all together. So notice this natural log of a plus one times pi will cancel. So it is negative from the first integral and positive from the second integral, so we're good to go. The next thing that we can do is combine the first and the last term of what remains and factor a pi out. So we have pi times the quantity, the natural log of a plus b minus the natural log of two. 
then using our logarithm rules, we can rewrite that as pi times the natural log of a plus b over two. And that's a good place to stop.